All right, praise God. Jesus bless this message in Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. All right, you guys, before we start, I'll let you know we have the barn tonight. It's Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we have a Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, I have to say a couple things before we get started here. Uh, in the barn, uh, we've been pretty free-spirited, you know, studying the Word, praying, singing, talking, all that, but now it's time for things to get back to order, okay? So, those of you that come to the barn, um, God is a God of order, and it's not just an internet room where people come just talk. It's church, and it's a very precious pearl that God has trusted me with, okay? So, um, I've already got you guys to where you're actually lifting your hands. You have a button where you lift your hand before y'all busting the microphones on, so that's good. God's a God of order. Okay, the next thing that we're going to stop is uh, all that typing while God is giving a lesson. While we're teaching God's word, no more typing, no more um, it's very disturbing to people who really want to hear the Word of God. And to those of you that are in there doing all that the whole time, you're not hearing the Word of God. Okay, and it's very disrupting to me when I'm trying to teach. You know, as it interrupts the Holy Spirit, the flow. So, no more of that. Um, when you come in the room, we're going to have two songs ready. We come in from 8 to 8.30 is login time. Write this down if you need to. 8 to 8.30 is login time. Come in in plenty of time. During that login time, you go ahead and write your prayer request in that chat room. Prayer request. Prayer request. Okay? And by the time we start the two songs, you can still put your prayer request. But by the time that second song is over, no more typing in that chat room because we get ready to start the lesson. And we show God respect, you know, whether it's in a room or your bathroom or your bedroom, wherever. When we're discussing God's word, that's holy ground. You know, you ain't going to go up to your building church while your pastor's teaching and y'all out there chit chatting all up in it. No, no, no. Ain't no difference up in here, y'all. Okay, but it's really disturbing some people with all that chatting. That's going to stop, okay? But at the end, we, get, we teach God's word. No chatting during that time. Igor gives his world news. No chatting during that time. At 10 o'clock-ish, when we're done, chat room's open. You can chat. We're going to stay in there for about three hours. You can chat. You can talk. My hand's up. And when the hands go up, when it comes time for 10 o'clock-ish to ask questions, you have questions, write them down. At 10 o'clock, we'll answer. We'll do our best to answer. Uh, 10 minutes a person. 10 minutes a person. 10 minutes a person. 10 minutes a person with the hands up. That's it. No long, drawn-out stuff unless you come in as a guest and I set up a time with you. But uh, we, whether we've been finding ourselves staying in there for 8, 9, 10, 11, 13 hours, and we're not going to do that anymore because it interferes with what God is doing through me. Okay? So God's a God of order. We're bringing order back into that room with all this just grown about 60 more people now. Okay? So remember that. I'll tell you guys that again at group. All right? All right. Because we don't want to cause anybody to miss anything that God is teaching here. You understand? And you shouldn't want to either. All right. If you've seen the last three videos I put out uh, about the two seeds, about the three compartments of hell, uh, yesterday's, and right now. Okay. I can't remember what I called everything. But anyway, they're there. And we're going to talk about some of this in the barn. And then this Sunday, we have Avi coming back in from Israel to finish up the Feast of Purim. Okay? So that's at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time Sunday. All right. Let's get back on this. Genesis chapter 6, Angels, the Armies of God's Wrath. What I want you to do right now is go to, to uh, Joel chapter 2, verse 1. And let's just read that really quickly. Because we in some serious days here, y'all. And the Lord is getting ready to come back. A whole lot of stuff getting ready to happen. So we need to be paying attention more than just chit-chatting, okay? <laughs> All right. Oh, no. That room is church. Okay, Joel chapter 2, verse 1. Blow the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm. In my holy mountain, 
Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. Let me fix this. Uh, for the day of the Lord is coming. For it is at hand. Uh, let me see if I'm going. A day of this going to two. A day of darkness and gloominess. A day of clouds and thick, thick darkness. Like the morning clouds spread over the mountains. A people come, great and strong, the like of whom has never been. Nor will there ever be any such after them, even for many successive generations. Okay, you can dissect that. What is it? What do you think that's talking? You pray and ask God first to help you give you understanding. You can dissect that if you want to. Those of you that want to, you can do it on here. You can do it at home in your notebook, or you can bring it to the group Saturday night. Okay, those of you that don't want to, that's just up to you. All right, going on to number two. You're going to go to Joel chapter two. You don't have to do that right now. You're going to read Joel chapter two and Revelation chapter nine. Talk about the fifth trumpet I want of Revelation 9. I want you to list the similarities in the two armies. The armies in Joel chapter 2 and the armies in Revelation chapter 9 for the fifth trumpet. Listing the two similarities. Okay, let's go to... Uh, you guys out there, you go to Joel chapter 2. I've already done it. You go to Joel chapter 2. Pause your video and read that right now. Joel chapter 2. Pause and read. I'll do Revelation chapter 9. All right, you should have paused and read Joel chapter 2. Uh, Revelation chapter 9 uh, is the fifth trumpet. Then the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fallen from heaven to the earth. To him it was given the key to the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and smoke arose out of that pit, and the smoke of a grape as the smoke of a great furnace. So the sun and the air were darkened because of the smoke of the pit. Then out of the smoke came locusts upon the earth, and to them was given power, as the scorpion of the earth had power. They were now listen, they were commanded not to harm the grass of the earth or any green thing or any tree. Now listen, but only those you can hurt you cannot hurt the trees, the grass, or any green thing, but only those who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. Now you can go on and read the rest of that, but I want to really ponder right there on verse four. Revelation nine, verse four. You notice that God said he can't these are our locusts, can't hurt the grass or the earth or any, any green thing. They're only allowed to hurt the ones that are here that do not have the seal of God on their forehead. That means the ones that have the seal of God on their foreheads, they're here. You ain't no rapture happened yet, y'all. But what does it mean? I think we most, most of us understand that with yesterday's video, okay? But what does it mean to uh, have the seal of God on your forehead? I want you to understand this. What's the first place? What's the first piece of armor that you put on? You put on the helmet of salvation. That's the first piece, the helmet. What's under that helmet? Well, your brain. What's behind your forehead? Your brain. What is that? Your mind. Okay, so it's got to start. Anything you do. Whether it be wake up in the morning, get out of bed, or whether it be get up and go to the bathroom, or whether it be I'm hungry, or no, it don't matter what you do. I want to read the Bible. I want to pray. Whatever it is you want to do, it's going to start there. It's going to start there. Just like having a relationship with Jesus Christ, it's going to start there. And for most people, it stays there. It never moves down to here. Okay. Because that's when you put your helmet of salvation on. 
And then that's a decision you make. It always starts there. Then it will move down to your heart where you're putting on the breastplate of righteousness. That means you are going to be righteous by obeying God's commands, by knowing his command, by loving him, by choosing, desiring, wanting to, to love him to the best of your ability. You don't understand the armor. That's what it's about. Being a real Christian is what it's about. Uh, your feet prepare with the gospel of peace. It means you got that helmet on. You decided. It's moved to your heart. You love God so much. You are doing what he said to do. And your feet prepare with the gospel. It means you're ready to go and sh share it with the world that you love Jesus. You're going to be a witness, a testimony. The word. You understand all that stuff. We ain't going through the armor again. But my point is it starts there. The seal of God on your forehead isn't a stamp or a literal mark. The mark of the beast is a literal chip, literal, literal. Seal of God on your forehead means you keep your mind. How many times has the Lord told you here to set your mind on things above? Even when things are going horrible, set your mind on the things above and not on the things of this earth. That means your mind is always on the Lord, y'all. And it's coming from your heart because you're a real saint. You can't be a saint. Don't call yourself a saint if you know about God and his word, but you ain't living it. Then don't call yourself a saint. It's a very narrow road of saints, y'all. The elect are the ones, doesn't mean you won't make a mistake. The elect is, the, is God's saints. And they're going to be elect here during that first part of that tribulation period. As you read it yesterday in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, Daniel 7, 25, Matthew 24, start at verse 15, Revelation 14, 12, I think. On and on, there's a lot of scriptures, y'all. Plus, that's what Jesus let me live for. You understand? I know. And we've all heard wrong stuff. People are still trying to give me dates. The rapture going to happen in 2028. Who knows? You don't know that. I, I can't, it makes me sick when people think they know something more than Jesus Christ himself. Stop trying to figure it out, y'all. That's what the Lord is saying. Stop trying to waste your time. Okay? It, you cannot. You cannot and you will never just figure it out. The Father is the only one that knows that, y'all, when that will be. We know the signs. We know the season. And that's as far as God will allow. Okay? But the point is, you could, you could die today. You understand that? You could die right now. So make sure you're sealed every day. Make that decision to walk with God every day. It's being worshiping God in spirit and truth is what that seal is. It's studying his word. It's abiding in his word. It's letting his word abide in you. It means you're obeying the things God said to do because you love them. You're really doing it. Your mind is all, you're ready to die for God and you will do it. You're trusting God with this. You're trusting God with that. You're obeying God with this. You're obeying, did you understand that y'all? Then you got the seal of God on your forehead. It means he's always on your mind so much that you literally do what he says to do. Okay, so yeah, you're here for that. You just read it yourself. Okay, now you're going to go and list the similarities in these two armies in them two chapters. Again, it's Joel chapter 2 and Revelation chapter 9. You're going to be reading about the fifth trumpet. Let's list the similarities in those armies. Okay, go ahead and do that. And then you're going to go to number three, Joel 2.6. That's what you're going to read. And you're going to read being about, it's going to be about mighty men. You're going to give me the Hebrew translation for the word mighty men. You're going to go read this. You're going to read it in Joel 2.6. You're going to read it in Genesis 6.4 and Genesis 10.8-9. What is the Hebrew translation for mighty men? Okay. Then. I'm going to ask you, how do the events of the fifth trumpet mirror the days of Noah? How do the events of the fifth trumpet mirror the days of Noah? Write it out. And how do you think the world is going to react to this judgment? Let me back it up, make sure you can see that. At the top of it, there you go. You got it all in there. There you go. Okay. Joel chapter 2, you guys, 
It prophesies of an invading army that is unlike any fighting force in the world that is that that the world has ever witnessed. Okay, uh, this is not a human military unit. Okay, it is a fallen angel army. In Joel chapter two, these evil angels they're going to be released from their prison. Okay, they're about to, to execute vengeance on the ungodly. And they're ungodly themselves, but they're here to put vengeance out on the ungodly humans. This is the day when the Genesis 6 rebels are going to be unleashed from their chains and used as a tool of the Lord's wrath. Okay, I'm not going to go in anymore. I'm going to let you answer that yourself. But somebody asked me why. Does God allow these fallen angels to be released out of their chains? That's why. Because I didn't know I had, had it. I knew that they were part of God's plan. I didn't know why He chose to do it that way. Don't know why He chose to do it that way. But that's their that's part of His plan to release them and let them wreak havoc on the ungodly. That's God's judgment. Part of it. Because it's God's judgment. That's the only way I can tell you. Okay? Who knows the mind of the Lord? Who knows the ways of the Lord? It's higher than ours. But we do understand that him letting these fallen angels come up out the abyss onto this earth again is part of his plan to wreak just judgment on the unjust, on the sinners. It's the way it is, okay? All right. So I really want you to bring this one, I'm not going to say any more about it, to the barn Saturday. We're going to go over this particular video Saturday, this Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in the barn. I want to hear what you got. I want you to dissect again. Joel 2.1. Do the best you can. What's it telling you? I want you to go to Joel for number two. Go to Joel chapter two. Read Joel chapter two. I always pray for us, y'all. And then read Revelation 9, which is the fifth trumpet. I want you to write out the similarities in these two armies. Then I want you to go to number three, Joel chapter two, verse six, Genesis six, four, Genesis 10, eight through nine. And tell me what the Hebrew word is for mighty men. Don't Google it, y'all. Literally break your Bible out. Do it the right way. Don't cheat. Okay. And then how do, how do the events of the fifth trumpet in Revelation 9, how do they mirror the days of Noah? And what do you think the world, uh, how do you think the world's going to react to this kind of a judgment? Write that out. Bring that to class, not tonight, but bring it Saturday night. This Saturday night. Okay, to the barn. And how do you get to the barn again? You go to JesusDoers.com and you click on the red barn. There's a link right there. It brings you right in the barn. Okay, you have to have the Google Chrome app. Okay, that's about all you got to have. Um, let's see what else is there. That's it. Um, anything else you guys need? Those of you that want, I'm not asking you for it. I, but I have to word it differently because a lot of people seem to miss this somehow. And they're asking me. So if you want to help the ministry, you want to help me and Igor, uh, help us with everything we got going on. And you want to help us help Africa too. It's in the description on the videos. You see my what you're looking at me right now and you see a little arrow underneath of it that says more. Click that arrow and it'll come up. PayPal, Venmo, Cash App. And I ask you, please just put gift because I'm not running a business here. Gift, because that's what it is. No matter what it is, I'm going to do the same thing with it anyway. No matter what you write on it. But for just put a gift. Okay, please. And if you use the uh, post office box, please don't write... We are Jesus doers because I don't have an account in the name of we are Jesus doers. Okay. I don't, I'll have a business here. All right. So just use my name, just how you see it in the box there. Uh, Kim Keel, P.O. Box, you know, 1672, Saluda, Virginia, 23149. Make it out to Kim Keel, K E E L, not to we are Jesus doers. I don't have a business. Okay. And I'm still getting a couple people doing that. I can't cash it that way. Okay, so please don't write that on there because I don't have a business, okay? So there you go, and thank you guys so much. Um, I won't be going back out there till Monday or Tuesday. 
I'm getting things worked out from my hack, okay? God allowed that for a reason, and um, I'm learned, I've learned a lot from it. I'll tell you that right now. So God is teaching me how to grow with this growth right here with all these new people, and it's, it's another learning lesson, okay? But this is God's ministry, y'all. That man that stole that money from me right from under my nose. <laughs> um, well, he stole from God. This is God's ministry. This is God. Everything come in here belongs to God. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not sweating that. Uh, what I was concerned about was, did he hack my phone? You know, and I do everything. I'm on my phone right now. I do everything from my phone. Got to change all the apps. Got to change all the passwords. Got to change all this and this and everything else. But you know what? I'm not sweating it because, like I said, he stole from God. Not from me. Everything that comes in here belongs to God, literally. I just to get to, I get to keep a little bit of it to pay my bills and to make sure I pay for stuff I need for this ministry so it can grow. And I have to help Igor and Africa. He stole from God. Okay, so you can continue to sin like you have been. It's all working out fine. It's okay. Go ahead. Okay, that was something stupid on my end. So let me give a little advice to you guys. If you need to call PayPal, Venmo, Cash App, Zelle, whatever you have, I don't even know what else they have out there, don't Google it. Literally, only call the numbers, that it, the contact that is in the app. <laughs> don't Google like PayPal, and there will be a bunch of numbers pop up, and you think you're calling PayPal. No, nah, baby, it's a hacker. I don't know why Google even allows that to be there like that, but they do. So... Only call through the apps. I've learned that. Okay? All right? But everything, other than that is safe and good. Okay? And um, everything's still still going like, oh, it's sinned like you have been. Same thing. Nothing's changed. God bless you all. I'll see some of y'all tonight in the barn. Remember, no chatting. No chatting while I'm giving God's word. While we're studying the Bible. No chatting while we're studying the Bible. Try not to chat well, Igor's giving his world news. I'm only going to allow a chat for one reason during his world news. Put your prayer requests in as soon as you come in that room. Have it done by the end of the second song. No more typing after the second song. Because we're getting ready to go into the word, into studying. And you're going to respect the Lord. We respect the Lord up in here. And we respect those that want to grow in the Lord up in here. Okay? That's what we're going to do. God's a God of order. We're going back to order. All right. God bless you all. We're here to help you every day in these last days when you're watching the return of these Nephilim on this earth today. Okay. We're here to help you so that you're not freaking out when you see this stuff manifest with your eyes. You'll spiritually be mature enough to know what to do. All right. So take this serious, y'all. In Jesus' name, God bless every single one of you. I plead the blood of Jesus over every single one of your minds that you will be sealed by God, by the Holy Spirit, that you will walk and abide in the Holy Spirit, and that you, you will let his word abide in you. And you will be a doer, a real Jesus doer of God's word. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray that. In Jesus' name, keep your faith, people. Keep your faith. Satan will try to bring you down. Y'all understand this. Satan come to wear you out. The saints of the Most High, and the Bible says, and he does. But you can, you can fight that, y'all. You don't have to walk in fear. You choose it. You don't have to walk in disobedience. You choose it. You don't have to walk in doubt. You choose it. Do you understand that? Understand your free will. I told you about a couple weeks ago. Understand that and use it Christ-like. All right? We have a helper. We have help here. Holy Spirit's helping us here, and we together, with this, at this ministry, we help each other. You understand? We build each other up, and we're throwing out the word to you every day. You get as much of God as you want. You want to sit in there and type while I'm giving the lesson? You ain't going to get much of God. Nothing, no more than what you already got. So we're not doing that anymore, okay, y'all? God bless you. I'll see you guys tonight in Jesus' name in the barn, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. God bless you.